back to the CS Mac podcast. I'm Chris Chavez. I'm Kyle Herber. I'm Caitlin Hutchison. On this week's show, we're talking about the U.S. sprinters who have set the tone early that 2023 is going to be a fast one. We saw some big performances in Miramar and Baton Rouge from Shakira Richardson and Aaliyah Hobbs. Right, Benjamin threw down in California. But before we get into all of that, Olipop is a prebiotic soda with two to five grams of sugar that is actually good for your gut health, and it's delicious. Use code Sidious25 for 25% off non-subscription orders. Learn more at drinkolipop.com or use the link in the show description to activate our promotional code. I'm drinking it out of my Brooks Hyperion House 2022 uh, mug because we're going back there this weekend. We'll be in Boston for the Boston Marathon with the Brooks team. We're going to do a pre-race show on Saturday. We'll be at Des Linden's morning run Saturday at 8 a.m. And then David Melly is hosting trivia later that evening on Marathon Monday. You can watch along with us on YouTube. We'll be live from 9 a.m. all the way through both pro races. Um, and it's going to be really exciting. We did this last year and more than 30,000 people watched along with us. So uh, I can see more people tuning in this time. Mute the TV, listen and laugh with us. It's going to be a good time. Uh, so that is our two major sponsors heading into this. I have oh. Olipop thoughts of the week. Yeah, every week I, I have something to say about Olipop. And so um, my I'm a big can guy. Like I like drinking beers out of cans, seltzers out of cans, Olipop out of cans. But my dad was kind of saying like, Olipop's got to get into the bottle game because he likes screwing and unscrewing <laughs> throughout the course of a day. He doesn't want to sit and drink all of an Olipop in one sitting sometimes which I disagree with, but, uh, you know, I guess if you're having a larger quantity of Olipop, that might make sense. But then it got me thinking about like a glass bottle Olipop and how good that would be. Oh, that'd be really good. Well, the other thing too, is that they've, I guess I, for, for the people who aren't falling so close into all the ins and outs of Olipop, they surpassed a and W for the number one selling root beer in the United States, which is kind of crazy. And a&W, you can get in sort of one of like those twist off tops. And you can, I think in some cases, get in a glass bottle. But again, like wait, if Olipop's not even in that territory yet, they're dangerous. Like it's going to, it's going to be good. So um, good recommendation. We'll take it up with our people at Olipop, but they're very happy with the partnership that we've uh, had with them over the last couple months and we're going to keep it rolling. So we'll, we'll get some Olipop in Boston this weekend. All right, let's start off. With the race that everyone was talking about this weekend, Shakari Richardson running 10, 5, 7. But of course, we have to point out the wind reading of 4.1 meters per second. And a reminder to all the listeners that anything above 2.0 is considered wind aided. TT Terry right behind her in 1083. But Shakari Richardson is back. I saw the people thrown out there that the conversion. Uh, would be 10.77 with 0, 0.0 wind, 10.68 with 2.0 wind. So you don't need to get the calculators out. All you have to know is that this is fast. She got out, stayed ahead, showcased that top end speed. The 100 meters is just so much better when Sha'Carri <laughs> Richardson is in the mix. Caitlin, what did you make of the race? Dude, I think it was insane that she shut down like five meters before the finish line and still managed to run a 10.57. And it, it wasn't even like, oh, like she did a little point. Like she literally did a little hop jump before she crossed the line. So I'm just saying like, screw the wind for a second, you know, cause we gonna talk about that. But just imagine how fast that would have been if she just ran straight through the line. And, and we talk about this all the time because people used to say it a lot with Bolt because he used to celebrate too. But it's just insane to think about. Um, and I think the other thing is too, is like everybody, everybody's saying, oh, but 4.1 win. You still have to execute the race. Do y'all not understand that you still have to be moving at the speed of light to make it happen? And if running with four miles per hour or hurricane rains at your back was so easy, well, like would make 10 five so easy, then everybody else would have ran 10 five. And what yeah, like my, like? my legs couldn't do that if you like threw me off a cliff. So the fact that she's capable of doing it says a lot. Now, 
I think I have two major opinions on this and I'm pro Shakari. I just, you know, I think she's great for the sport. I'm always rooting for her to run well because it, it put asses in seats consistently. So like when people hate her, like that's, that's good. And when people love her, that's good. Like uh, as long as people are watching. All publicity um, is good publicity. That's, well, that's what I'm saying. And, <laughs> and so the two thoughts I have is first off, she needed to get her swagger back and it's back. Like I didn't like the idea of it's the beginning of April. Is she opening up too fast? And even with the win, that conversion is 10, seven too fast. And it's like, all right, well, first off in 2021, she ran a, a legal 10, seven, two here, the mm-hmm. same meet, and then went on to dominate the Olympic trial. So, you know, mm-hmm. timing, I'm not that worried about that from that front, but then the other thing is just like the mental side of it. And now she is back and she has the swagger that she needed. And if popping a fast early time does that, then to me, that's more valuable than anything. I think another thing is too, is somebody was mentioning, well, you know, like if you're running this fast, this early and like shocking your nervous system, like it's not going to be good for like three months down the line or like it's going to be a little concerning. But I'm like, y'all didn't say that when Shelly decided that she wanted to run like, I don't know, like 10, 10 sixes or 10 sevens in like a span of, I don't know, a week. Like y'all didn't say that. And she still popped out and did what she had to do. Um, So I just feel as though, you know, the whole like the timing has to be perfect or it can't be this early. It can't be too late. I don't know. I just feel like that's what kind of screws up track and field, because I feel like at the end of the day, if it's a fast time, like you deserve to get hype about it, whether or not it's like at the Olympics or at some random high school meet. Like the time is the time for real. Kyle, you called this out on Twitter. Yeah. Well, it's just this idea of like, well, let's see where she is in August. And it's like, I don't know, it's April. So <laughs> like, what, should we not watch track or care or be excited about anything for the next four months? Because it's not worlds. And it's a very singular mindset that we always fall into of like, if it's not worlds, then it doesn't matter. And then you know what happens at worlds? Well, if it's not the Olympics, it doesn't matter. And it's yeah. just like, all right, well, I guess, you know, forget, forget it. Like, wake me up <laughs> when it's August. And then I, it's part of the storyline. It's part of being a fan, but also like, it matters in the sense of building momentum. Mm-hmm. And for Shakari, that's important. And also it's, you know, the, the whole idea of the central nervous system, is it too fast? It's like, well, what's the, what's the perfect amount in April? Because to me, she is not somewhere that she hasn't been before right now. She's just back to where she had been previously. And if she's going to try to get to new heights, then yeah, your, your starting point's going to be a little further along. There's two things I want to break down about Shakari that we kind of touched on already. Kyle, you said the swagger element. I saw flashes of 2019 Shakari Richardson here because when you go to some of these meets, you see that Shakari has a phenomenal fan base. Like all the young kids oh, yeah. want to get up close with her. And now she's doing these meet and greets with with fans like in the lead up to each one of the meets. And it's sort of like for her, she's still so young, but she's getting, I think, a better grip on handling the spotlight. It's early. And, and, you know, she's still super young and we're going to have bumps along the way when it comes to like the growing pains of handling that sort of spotlight, especially as the season gets going. But there's just something to, uh, I, I kind of am observing that she carries handling things better. Now, the other part was just sort of like the uh, Jamaica versus USA storyline of like Jamaica Twitter went off on this one, calling it <laughs> that she did this with a tornado at her back. And that's fine because you know, for her, we're all about the the storylines in this sport. And there's no one who's been down and out more than Shakari, I think, over the last couple of years. And people are going to make it USA versus Jamaica. They're going to make it good versus evil like we did with Which Bolt and Gatlin. We are, I, I, you know, in this sense, like, you know, I love Shelly Ann for good. coming. Yeah, good yeah, I love good. I love Shelly Ann for when she came over to, to our place, but you know, I'm an American. Like I'm going to have to root for, for Shakari in that duel. Uh, so I say at the end of the day, let the haters hate. I want the drama. I want the intrigue going into Budapest. We're listening now, Shakari. I think like this was fantastic to see. Now, Caitlin, on the technical side of things, am I right in kind of saying that the area over the last two years that we kind of observed that she needs to make a slight improvement on is the start because that's where someone like mm-hmm. Shelly Ann can really get ahead. And you don't want to be chasing down Shelly Ann for your mm-hmm. price in a race, but this start was better. And it seems to be like what 
Shikari has been working on. And it, it looked good in Miramar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looked really, really good. And I, I think you're right to what you're pointing out. Like her start was something that definitely needed to improve. Um, but I think she's pretty much got it made when you're working with someone like T.T. Terry, who's also got a monstrous start there. Iron sharpens iron. So there's no way you're working with these women um, or your best friend. And that's not going to happen at some point. And so when you fix her start and she's already got an amazing top end speed. Like she's going to be fine. And I think this is going to make for a good race. Um, whenever her and Shelly do meet each other again, because everyone's going to be waiting for that. Even if she doesn't get the best start in comparison to Shelly, we know that she has monstrous top end speed. So if she can lock in, I mean, she might be chasing her, but that don't mean that she can't get her. So, you know, it would be great to have the perfect race, but even not having the perfect perfect race makes for some of the best races, so. All right, so let's move to the U.S. woman who actually ran <laughs> a world-leading time this weekend in the 100. That's Aaliyah Hobbs, ran 10.87 to win the Lloyd Willis Invitational at LSU. It was her first solo 100-meter race of the season. The win reading was 2.0, so she got the max uh, on there. Proving you don't need a healthy wrist to run super fast yeah. in, in the 100. A year ago at this meet, she opened up with 11.08 and finished fourth place in the race. So I think what we're seeing out of Aaliyah Hobbs is that, one, I love that she is still sort of moving in the shadows. That was a world-leading time, but everyone in the after this weekend is still talking about Shakari. People are going to continue to sleep on Aaliyah Hobbs. But after the indoor season that we saw from her, that momentum has carried out into the outdoor season. And it's really good to see because, you know, she's just one of the people to root for. And, you know, in the sense of, I think we're going to have a really cool duel between Aaliyah Hobbs and Shigeri at USA's. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be good uh, before we even get to facing off against the Jamaicans. Honestly, I've, sorry, Kyle, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, we saw it indoors first. We saw that her 60 dropped from 707 to 694. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what do you expect? You know, and Aliyah's not someone who is going to struggle in the last 40 of the race. She had a great indoor season. There was definitely some questions surrounding the wrist of, I didn't, I didn't necessarily expect her to open up already. (laughs) Um, But, you know, just where she left off, it's, it's that momentum. And I think it's what we're just talking about with Shakari. Like it matters. I think, um, because I know you were just talking about, like, can we break up the Jamaicans? I honestly think that she will be, like, the face of USA in terms of breaking up the Jamaicans, mainly because, I mean, it's not that Shikari or TT or Melissa couldn't be at the front of that, but when you want to talk about, like, who's been in the sport for a while or who's been in for it longer and like who has dealt with being a professional athlete for a longer amount of time. I feel like Aaliyah, like you said, to stay in the shadows, continue to pop her shit every single time. Like she's supposed to became the second fastest woman ever over 60 meters indoors. Um, And now she's starting to really put her foot down and say, Hey, like, I know y'all been kind of on and off with me hot and cold, but like, if you're going to get on this wagon, you're going to have to get on because where I'm going, I can't take everybody with me. And I think that's, what's going to be so exciting because she, I, I just, I just feel like she is going to be the face of it all. And I know you were saying like people be sleeping on her, but I don't know. Like the people that I got on my timeline, they always been rooting for her and backing for her, especially like, I think one of her friends was saying like, yeah, like Julian Alfred might break the the 60 meter world record, but Aaliyah going to do it first. I say, okay, shoot. Like it just is what it is. Yeah, if well, you're so sleeping I, on Aaliyah Haas at this point, you're just a really heavy sleeper. Exactly. <laughs> like, wake up, okay? I got to knock on the door or something. I think it's, you know, talking about Shakari, it's like, well, if she had opened up any slower or too slow, then everyone would jump on her. I will say for Aaliyah, I think this is like the perfect yes. opener. Like, yes. just that, that, that is sweet spot. It's the Goldilocks of like, she's fit, she's ready, she's good. But you're not going to hear any chirping of like, it's too early, it's too early. It's like, perfect. no, no. Caitlin, for the people, obviously we have a lot of distance owners who listen to this podcast, but what should they know about Aaliyah Hobbs in terms of just like what to you is the strongest part of her race? I think the strongest part of her race now is the finish. Like, I think she's always been super speedy out of the blocks, but I think what's been great for her is like what I've noticed that has changed from when I first started watching her race into 
the you know amazing athlete she is right now is like her posture when she's coming into that top end speed i mean it just looks like she's high step into the finish line like if you could literally just break her the end of her race into like little pictures everything would just be perfect everything's in line from head to toe 90 degree angles dorsey flex like everything is just great and so i think that's what's the big the best thing is for her because same thing I said with Shakari. If things do go south, like in the beginning of the race, she has got enough momentum um, and enough, I guess, just amazingness to make it happen when the end of the race comes around. So, in one of the like the first buy or sell segments that we had, I bought stock in 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 Aaliyah Hobbs, and that's like looking pretty good. And in addition to that, my other sort of like prediction on the predictions episode was that Shakari makes a team, so I'm sitting pretty pretty right now. Yeah. And also. You know, at the same time, they're not the boldest of predictions, but I'll throw mm -hmm. this one to the two of you. Who's got the better metal shot right now? It's got to be Aaliyah, I would think, because Aaliyah has kind of proven herself over being able mm -hmm. to handle the rounds and being on that championship stage that Shakari still doesn't have that aside from the 21 Olympic trials, at least like on the international stage. Mm -hmm. I want to agree with that too. And this is not to count her out. I think that she definitely has a chance to get a medal. And this could be the year where she starts off, um, you know, that trophy board of her professional medals. But I think, like you said, a lot of, a lot of what we see with fast individuals is that it's usually the people who are the veterans or have the most experience that can make it through all of this. Um, and like everybody has to start somewhere, which is why I said, you know, this might be the starting point for Shakari this year. But if you want to talk about based off of just what's on paper, what's on numbers and how long people have been racing, I think Aaliyah probably has the one up on her. All right, let's move over to Rye Benjamin running a 400 meter PR of 44, 21 out <laughs> in California. Uh, Was he wearing USC a bib? Uh, yeah, that was a <laughs> controversy about him. Time? Do we know who was right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these 400 meter hurdlers are really showcasing some flat 400 meter speed. Carson Walholm, uh, indoors went 45 31. So I just think that whenever uh, Ride decides to open up over hurdles, it's going to be good. With Dos Santos out with the knee injury, Carson Warholm still working his way back towards 2021 form. Mm -hmm. This is could be Rye Benjamin's best shot at a gold medal. Yeah, he's been he's been wanting it for a while. It's like everyone else has gotten it. And he's just like, man, I got second. I done did all this stuff. Where is my gold medal at? Boy, listen, if you running 44 low, because that was a PR for him, right? I believe. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. If you're running 44 low at this point of the season, then, I mean, shoot, anything you want to happen can happen. So... <laughs> Yeah, so his previous personal best was 44-31 from 2019. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's kind of surprising is how infrequently he runs flat 400s. Yeah. And I, last year, I don't think he ran a single one. And, you know, his I believe it was his hamstring was bothering him at points during last mm -hmm. year. And he actually wasn't going over hurdles quite a bit, even in practice. There was a long stretch of time in which he didn't jump any hurdles, which seems important. Um, though, you know, I've never trained for the hurdles. And then I was actually just reading, uh, the Jonathan Galt interview with Trey Cunningham and he only goes over hurdles once every 10 days. So mm -hmm. look, I'm, I'm out of my element here in what's normal, what's not. But the point is, is that he's actually a fantastic 400 runner and we haven't even seen what he's truly capable of. Cause obviously at the biggest meets he's in the 400 hurdles. Mm -hmm. And he dominated this race. Like he looked very, very strong. A part of me is thinking, is he like, well, if Michael's going down to the hundred, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little, little trade off, <laughs> you know, would it be kind of fun? No, I don't think so. But I think he wants to. I think you know that four by four squad. You you want to show that you deserve to be on it come mm -hmm. August, and I think he's now proven that. What's the closest you think? you can get your 400 hurdles and your 400 PR uh, down to, because like, it's so funny to like, it, it's kind of crazy to see just sort of like the gap between like Warholm, Warholm's flat PR in the, in the 400 hurdles after the Tokyo Olympics was like super close to his yeah. 400 hurdles PR. And it, it, I think, what is it now? Like two, two seconds, like less than mm. that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Rise is now 2.04 seconds difference. So 10 hurdles and, you know, 
not to you know cause any controversy these are the men's hurdles like they're pretty high <laughs> like yeah the, I, I i'm on team like the women's 400 hurdles could afford to be three inches higher um but you know that's like that's nothing you would expect i think like if you were creating an event out of thin air and you're like how much do you think 10 would slow you down you'd, you'd expect like a, more than a few because what's yeah. it, what's sydney's open pr in the 400 hurdles can you look that one up kyle really quick her open what is her it? open 49 yeah yeah it's 49 yeah so i, mean, I she guess she's 47 had... <laughs> yeah i was i was gonna mention that too but i didn't know if you wanted to because i mean what one to three seconds that's still oh, no it's it's 50.07 her open pr is 50.07 yeah so is what is that like a half a second <laughs> <Yeah>. wait <laughs> what that is that is she very gets fun. faster it's faster the more hurdles there are. the more hurdles you put the faster she'll run so real quick just to throw some some more flowers uh similarly i guess if we're giving some kudos to 400 hurdlers who are just running fast flat 400 shamir little 50.73 fifth best time of her career outdoors fastest outdoors since august 2021 She's, mm -hmm. you know, also testing something out similarly. The strength we saw indoors with her running a couple 800s. Now the speed with the 400. Don't count her out. I mean, the best part about the women's 400 hurdles is that we have four spots to give. So uh, yes. to send people. So that is. But that's also the scariest part because yeah. there are a lot of women who are in Shamir's position that it's just like you could. Those four positions can be almost anybody at this point. So now. If we want to talk about an event that is just highly competitive and really, and we only have three spots, the, the traditional three in the U.S., let's talk about the women's 200 because this weekend we saw Abby Steiner clock the 200-meter world lead in Miramar by running 22-23. In the, for me, I was kind of like, all right, Abby took care of business. She ate up the curve and won the race. The one that, the big takeaway I have from this one is Tamari Davis. Can we give her the nickname, like, the future or something like that because <laughs> she ran a personal best of 22 31 finished second she just turned 20 years old back mm -hmm. in february this was really good for her because her personal bests were back from 2018 and confidence wise like this is a big step forward mm -hmm. to make the 200 meter squad at the u.s championships you have to get past abby steiner Olympic bronze medalist Gabby Thomas, Jenna Prandini, who was just reliable and consistent in this event, Tamara Clark, Brittany Brown, who has a mm -hmm. world championship medal from 2019. All of them for three spots is yes. insane. And it's crazy, though, because Tamari, like she was on the she was in the relay pool and they took her. And they just didn't race her. Um, so like she has the capability to make the team. And I think the wonderful thing that I've liked about her journey is the simple fact that, well, I don't really know what she's thinking, but I, it just feels like they're not rushing her to be the greatest ever like today or tomorrow. I think they like realize that she's so young and that she has time because every time when I see someone talk about uh, like what she's running, nobody's ever like, oh, well, she's not better than Gabby Thomas or she's not better than Abby. She's not better than you know, the Jamaicans or all that other stuff. I think they just realize that she's so young and are just like, okay, well, when everybody else moves out the way and they're done with their career, like she is going to be the person that is at the front of this. And she's been showing that by running the PRs and she's running the 60s all indoor, running her outdoor PR in the 200 this past weekend. I mean, whenever, whenever everybody else want to retire, like it's going to be the Tamari Davis show. It's sort of like someone really, really good is going to get left off the U.S. team this uh, this summer. Well, it's April, you know, 10th. U.S. has top eight times in the world. Which, look, like, I'm not saying that we're going to go and we're sweeping worlds later in the season. Obviously, there's been a couple big meets in the U.S. early in the season. But it's just the depth. Like, there is incredible depth on the U.S. side right now. Yeah. I mean, but, yeah, the scary part is that Jamaica hasn't opened up yet. Like Sharika Jackson and, and Shelly Ann haven't done anything okay. yet solo. They're sitting pretty and they're watching and they're like, huh, it's cute. Enjoy that for like two more weeks. <laughs> uh, but we're ready to put our names there when, when we can. So, uh, but that's what we're here for. We're here for just sort of the dramatics of, of the whole season and how that unfolds. All right. Moving over to the men's side, Christian Coleman just barely beats out 
Leslie Tobogo by 0. 0.003 seconds. A lot of hype coming into this race because on paper, it included Steven Gardner. Uh, Kenny Bednarik was in the race. Gardner scratched from the meet. We still ended up getting a very good showdown. The camera angles, though, I will say at the very end, made it look like Tobogo caught Coleman, who was really tying up in those final 30 meters. Like, you knew who the 100-meter guy was in this one. The results say otherwise, that Coleman hung on. Maybe, it, like, I, I watched it back a couple times that I think Tobogo leaned at the wrong finish I, line. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was because... When, Because at first I was like, wait, I'm like a thousand percent sure that like Christian got second. And then when I went back and rewatched the video, there were like two lines like really close together. And I think it was the first one. And I don't know if Christian was guessing either, but if he was, he guessed right. Because I mean, it was literally like this at the line. Yeah, this track meet and the camera angles you could tell the stadium was not built in mind of like, <laughs> we're going to have the best athletes in the world come here and race because you just never saw what was happening consistently throughout any of the races the whole time also you could really great view of traffic in the background um i think that if this race had been like 10 meters longer that the top three guys wouldn't have made it like <laughs> i think everyone was very glad by the time the finish line was there that it had arrived Timed the, it perfectly they yeah the 20 seconds part. of running in them yeah, because at the end, Tobogo goes down hard after oh, the race. Hard. And he was, like, I, touching his knee. He was able to walk off the track with just, you know, I think one woman was, like, helping him out. So, um, you know how they do, like, the NFL injury report, reports where they're, like, was able to walk off on his own accord yeah. and all that stuff? Like, Tobogo had one person kind of barely helping him out. So, I think, like, he's going to be okay. But, yeah, it was, if you're a Botswana Sprints fan, you were holding your breath afterwards and being like, I hope he's he's really all right. But, um. In the end, really good race, really good showing for Coleman as the 100 guy to step up and beat a world championship medalist, Kenny, who I guess like this was the season opener for him and so that he can, you know, call it a rust buster, whatever it might be. But sort of if you're if you're Coleman, you're you're happy and you're like, all right, let me get back down to the 100 after this. Mm -hmm. Hey, I know Oregon is on trimesters, but like, when is Tobogo supposed to report for class? <laughs> I don't think I don't think he's going. <laughs> Can you I imagine, mean... like, any other sport if like the top prospect in the world announced he was going somewhere, and then it's like there's no follow up when he doesn't go? <laughs> like, should we just pretend it never happened? That he I think so because people were like wondering if he was go like everybody forgot because I remember Twitter blowing up for like two days. I was like, oh my god gonna be an Oregon duck he got and a graphic like, and out and everything too I think <laughs> it's a big deal not there like I remember when he opened up his season like somewhere and everybody was like why is Leslie not in school <laughs> he, he, he saw that Jerry was the coach and he's like all right <laughs> he's like he didn't recruit me uh, like, I'm, not, I'm not doing both. 10 miles of work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right other results from the weekend uh, Nicholas Alekna launched the discus 68.39 meters for world lead. Apparently he had fouled on a 71 meter throw last year. His opener was 62.63 meters and went on to finish the year with a 69.81 personal best. So he's off to a big start to the year. He was a silver medalist last year. Christian, uh, Chech won, uh, at worlds, but Alekna was the youngest world discus medalist in history. He's just 20 years old. So, uh, really we're big throws guys like you just love to see that i think that the discus is one of those events that maybe doesn't get you know the glitz and glam uh that it deserves and at the same meet cameron rogers threw 77 30 for the world lead valerie allman threw 70.25 at the triton invitational so like those two also are going to set up nicely for a duel sometime in this outdoor season Otherwise, I'm looking at some other results right now. Right now, the men's 100 list has four men from Ghana under 10-10 with Benjamin Asmati running the third fastest time of the year. He ran 9.99 in Texas. It's still super early. Uh, American men haven't shown their cards yet. Ronnie Baker with a 10.01 in Miramar is the top American right now. But again, no Fred, no Trey, no Marvin. Uh, Fred is still running hills in uh, – where is he? Where does he go and train? Uh, he's – yeah, Granada. The Instagram content is fantastic. Shout out to Montverde Academy's Issa Masinga, our boy from uh, yeah. New Balance Nationals, ran 2011 and 10.15 as a high schooler, both win legal. 
Vernon Norwood was a DNF at the 800 at LSU this weekend, went out in 51, just like he said he would uh, when he sat down with us at Worlds last year. But some people are still saying that he's out on the track. Maybe he'll give uh, the 800 another try some other time. And let's move in to our buy or sell segment. Uh, Kyle, lead us off. What are you buying this week? All right. I'm buying the high school 3200 at the Arcadia Invitational. Normally, I don't want to buy a 3200. I'd rather buy the full two mile, but Simeon Birnbaum, 834.10. Jeez. And I'm... I'm just like three guys ran 834 in a single race. So three of the top 10 times in high school history, you know, converting for two miles and 44 boys broke nine minutes in one meet. Back in my day, (laughs) if you broke nine minutes, you could go to any college you want in the country and you could get money anywhere. And now maybe you can walk on. (laughs) Maybe is insane. It's it's crazy. I don't know what's happened, but I does Arcadia give like a special t-shirt or anything like that? If you break nine, like what's the what's the big prize? Yeah, you just got like I don't know, a handshake <laughs> from like Rye Benjamin. I saw he was yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there was some other good results there. Irene Riggs, 3,200, won in 952, nine women under 10 minutes. Sadie Engelhart, mile victory in 436. Aaron Salmon, sub 150, goes uh, 149.07 for 800 meters. So I like that one. Goodbye, uh, Kyle. Uh, Caitlin, what are you buying this week? I am buying only because it hasn't happened yet. And I know it's going to be like insane is the women's 400 hurdles um, NCA because Britain. Wait, you're buying this like, early. We're going to get you on the podcast before. That. <laughs> I gotta, listen, I, because I don't know. Like I was literally just thinking about it a half a second ago. I'm like, we ain't seen Britain or Masai, the two like, biggest competitors in the 400 hurdles like they're coming from opposite ends of the spectrum to meet each other in the middle like you got the american record holder in the indoor 400 and you have got the two-time ncaa record holder in the 100 hurdles and the 60 hurdles about to meet in the middle in the 400 hurdles so i'm buying that very early because I, I just don't even know what's gonna happen. I'm she's scared. like she's like it's, it's gonna be fire. gone off the shelves by the time. It's uh, a life fact. I have to say it now taken. before anybody else calls it. So all yeah. right, I am buying the Fred Curley Marcel Jacobs beef. Uh, shout out to Anson Henry who had an Instagram live where he kind of talked to uh, Fred Curley and asked him sort of like what he thought about Marcel competing at Europeans, and he's like, well, indoors, indoor you know, the real dogs come out in outdoor season. And then Anson asks him like, is Marcel a real dog? And he was like, no. And then like from there, then there was an Instagram story. Caitlin did a nice breakdown of all of this on our TikTok, um, where uh, Marcel Jacobs posted on his Instagram story about like a lion doesn't concern himself with like the opinions of sheep or whatever it might be. And then after that, uh, Fred posts a photo on his Twitter being like, welcome to my jungle. And it's a big photo of like a tiger. So like these two guys, I can't oh, wait boys. for their sort of showdown. But, you know, I did see a couple of the TikTok comments were like, yeah, I mean, if you can't wait for that showdown, it may not happen. It's, a lot of people are predicting Marcel doesn't even make the final at Worlds. And I was like, that's disrespectful. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Kyle, what are you selling? My sell is that the BAA DraftKings was interested Mm. in allowing bets to be open for the Boston Marathon. And the BAA said that they didn't have enough time to you know, go through proper protocols and yada, yada, yada to allow it in such a time. And so Massachusetts Gaming Commission didn't allow for it. And I'm just like, what protocols are just like, have the race, just have the race. You don't have to do anything like DraftKings will take care of the odds. We'll take care of placing the bets. Just don't do anything and really don't... fumbled it i think i don't understand like, fumbled, BA fumbled this one ruined the fun running, for everybody running had the chance to become one of the biggest sports in america yet again and <laughs> here we are falling to the wayside i mean i coming off this weekend with the masters like it's just you can make 
really creative bets around like live betting the Boston Marathon would be really fun. But even then, it's like you have top African, top American, top Asian runner. Like those are other subcategories and bets that you can place. So, I mean, I was looking forward to it uh, for sure, but not to happen this year. Boo. Uh, Caitlin, what are you selling? What am I selling? Leave women athlete bodies alone, okay? Y'all have my girl Anna Hall on TikTok crying because one of y'all told her that she looked like a man. And it was people talking about, oh, well, it's not that many folks that are saying it, but it's still her. No, like, do you know how many people have joked with me and told me I look like Grant Holloway in high school because of how big I am? (laughs) It's funny at first, but really, like, in all seriousness, the stuff hurts. So I just feel as though y'all need to stop commenting on people because if you don't think we already like pressure ourselves about it, then you're crazy. And then not to mention, there's already been many of articles and situations where y'all hear about coaches constantly checking their athletes weight or constantly making comments saying that, you know, you ain't never going to be nothing unless you're like the size of my fingers. So, you know. Well said, Caitlin. You were also cited in the New York Times, like, Oh, what a flex yeah. on everyone. You didn't even tell us that, that it was happening. Like because you know, I like, first line of a New York Times article talking about like uniforms and just kind of like, you know, yeah. what makes people comfortable and all that stuff. Like, Caitlin, you're on one right now. Dude, people should be buying stock in you. <laughs> me, the Caitlin Hutchinson show is about to go insane. And as soon as I start racing again next season, all of y'all gonna be sick. So all right, final one. I am uh, selling the Marathon Race Walk Mixed Relay that m- will make its debut at the Paris Olympics. World Athletics announced this one last week. Two men, two women walking 42.195 kilometers. And it's just sort of like no one asked for this. No one asked for this. They cut the 50K race walk. And then, you know, I was just sort of like, I'm staying out of this one because, like, you know, we v- really don't pay all that much attention to the race walk anyway. But then I was like, let me take a look and see like what the race walk community thinks of this one. The whole comment section is just like bashing it. Like no one is in favor of this thing. Like people want a, you know, four by eight DMR or all that stuff. Like any of that, no one asked for the mixed relay marathon race walk. And the only comment that was positive on the world athletics Instagram was like Paris 2024 commenting like four flame emojis, but that was, that was it. So I don't know, this might be hopefully one and done at the Paris Olympics, but mm, yeah, it doesn't seem like anyone's really all that thrilled about it. There's just other, other better things that you could have done with the, with those spots that I guess like that's going to be more athletes. Like it's, it's 25 teams of one male and one female athlete. Oh, so it is, it's the same. Oh, it's just 25 teams of just two people. It's not four different runners or walkers. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, not that interesting. Like I just want to sit in the meetings when they come up with what they decide to pick, because it's like out of all of the options that everyone has given, like, I want to know logistically why you felt like this option made more sense than everything else. (laughs) And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to bash. I'm not trying to be like, oh, y'all know what y'all talking about. I just want to know the thought process. True. Like, I don't think that this one was one that athletes were like, hey, this is a good idea. I think it worked the other way around or is like, but it's hey guys, this is what we're doing. And none of the athletes seem to be like, ah, we want the 50K race walk back. We want the 35K <laughs> race walk back. And yeah, I don't know. Like even if he made the 50K race walk team 25 spots based off of world rankings, I feel like they would take that over this thing. So I don't know. <laughs> this is too much race walk talk, I think, for this podcast, Caitlin. All right. This weekend, we got the Mount Sac Invitational. We've got the Boston Marathon. So stay yeah. attuned to our social channels for updates on that. Our very own Jasmine Todd will be opening up at Mount Sac, I believe. She'll be yes. doing the uh, long jump. And, I, you know, the part about it is, is like we've been seeing these videos on Jasmine's Instagram channel about her running these flat hundreds. And we're getting a little bit of like intel. It's like we want we want I Jasmine in a, in, a, in a hundred soon. Hey, look, 2015 Jasmine is back. That's all I'm going to say. All right. I like that. 
and we'll have a couple more podcast episodes. Again, we'll be live on YouTube on Saturday afternoon with the Boston Marathon preview. And then on Marathon Monday, tune in at 9 a.m. on the Sidious Mag YouTube channel. We'll be doing a watch along as we watch everything unfold at the Boston Marathon. You'll get our reactions, our opinions, our takes, and our jokes uh, live and real time for a couple hours. So mute your TVs and watch along with us. It'll be a good time. Caitlin, Kyle, thanks for joining me. And we'll see you guys again very soon.